Hi there, playing with Chunk again. This time, Labornetzgerät 3215 from Heinzinger. And Heinzinger is a Swiss company that I think still makes lab power supplies. That's what Labornetzgerät means. Um, and I almost got that one for free because well it cost me 50 bucks but that's nothing for a 32 volt 15 amp power supply uh, the problem was someone bumped on this knob and the potentiometer on the back side fell apart and uh, well, it was, it was quite easy to repair because uh, I simply had to reassemble the pot and uh, yeah, it works. And today I want to show you how it works because I think that's a quite interesting design here. It's a linear power supply, but it's also a switched power supply. So it's a switched linear whatever power supply. Uh, in the first moment it looks like a super normal standard power supply. There is a big S transformer. Yes, it is big. The whole power supply weighs about 20 kilos or more. I haven't put it on a scale, but yeah. Then we have some sort of rectifier here. We have caps nicely connected with thick copper wire here. There is input from the rectifier and output to the regulating transistors and also to the board here that controls everything. It has its own small power supply here with this transformer. The diode here, that's just the diode, which is in parallel to the output. I think that's only a protection diode or a freewheeling diode, as you call it. Okay, what else do we have? Here is another board, that's for the LED volt and amp meters. There are the two potentiometers one for the current, uh, for the voltage, and one for the current, which is here. The blue thing down here, and that's the part I had to reassemble. It was simply, yeah, someone bumped here the, the knob and the cover on the back side fell off and all the parts fell out and that's it. Down here, power switch, nothing special, just switching the main voltage okay so let's see how it works it's simple you turn it on you select your output voltage with this 10 turn potentiometers potentiometer yeah yeah it's two of them it goes to almost 32 volts and we are limiting the volts right now if you're turning the amps down, it switches over to uh, current limiting, which is indicated by this LED. Now it's back to voltage limiting. And if we hook up a load, we can try that. And as a load, we need a resistor, and if we want to draw 15 amps, the full capacity of this power supply, we probably need a big resistor, like this one. That's a 1.7 ohm resistor, and from the size, I would say it's about a kilowatt or something. I don't know, it's very old. I got it from a museum. They cleaned out their stuff and I found it in, in a box from, uh, with some free stuff. Okay, let's connect it. You see I took the large diameter wires. 
and let's go on. And we have 14.8 amps. It's limiting now to 25 volts. So that's the maximum amps here. If I turn down the volts, it jumps over to voltage regulation and not current regulation. And you probably hear that the hum of the transformer changes. Let me see if we can get that a little bit better. And if we dis disconnect the load, the hum stops. In fact, it sounds a little bit like the uh, the amplifier you know, of uh, Back to the Future when Marty tries the, the big ass uh, speaker amplifier in Doc Brown's laboratory. Maybe they used such a power supply for that sound effect. We don't know. Okay, let's analyze that sound a little bit. So if we have no load, there is no audible uh, harm from this uh, transformer. And with load, we can hear it, of course. So that's logical. We have more load. Transformer has more work to do. But it's not exactly that, because Listen for this. If I turn it up, you can hear uh, 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 a bit of hum now, but only when I change the voltage up. Try that again. Okay, and that gives us a little indication that there is something more than just a linear power supply. And, well, let's have a look what they did. Well, the first thing you may notice is that this rectifier, as I called it, has a bit more than usual uh, connections. And, in fact, it's not a rectifier, it's a half switched uh, triac rectifier so that means it has two triacs and two diodes and the triacs can be triggered by the electronic board here um, to um, adjust the input voltage so I call this the input voltage before the regulator transistors, before the output. So they regulate the input voltage to the transistors according to the value we select here in the front. Okay, I will show you that on the voltmeter. Maybe that's a little bit clearer. Well, first I connect my voltmeter probes uh, here. That's very convenient with these um, copper rails here. And we see I have 30 volts on the output. And I have 38 volts on the capacitors. Okay, what happens when I connect the load? Of course, the voltage will drop a bit because of the current. Uh, so I have now an output voltage of 25 volts and the input voltage 
on the capacitor is 27. So that means we, the linear transistors only have to get rid of 2 volts at 14 amps, that's 28 watts, so that's something they can handle easily. And if I connect my oscilloscope probe to the input that comes directly from the transformer, it's somewhere down here where the uh, secondary tabs of the transformers are. Um, connecting an oscilloscope to a power supply of any kind, you always have to check if your, the, the voltage you measure as ground is uh, related to ground potential or not. So here in this case we have a big transformer. Everything that is on the secondary side is uh, not connected to ground, not related to ground, because the problem is this is ground and it's also earth ground. So if you connect that to anything primary here, for example mains phase or something like that, your fuse, your fuse goes boom and probably your oscilloscope too and most likely your probe wire here melts down and everything that's not nice. But when there is a big transformer inside your chances are good that on the secondary side there is no such problem. And if you're not sure you better use an insulation transformer, somewhere a transformer that has a 230 volt input and a 230 volt output or 110 and in and 110 out if you live in the US or somewhere else um, that is uh, isolates you or your device from mains uh, potential and you can hook up your probes without any danger. You still have to be careful because high currents are always possible, but yeah. Okay, let me see. I took take this one here and I hope I don't slip and short everything. Okay, that's it. So that's what comes directly from the a transformer and it looks like that. So the wavy lines you see right in the moment, no not now, maybe a little bit later, um, that's a, uh, yes that's what I mean, that's uh, command signals on the on the mains line, these signals are used for example to switch the uh, current meters, the electric meters in your house from low tariff to high tariff or well maybe now in the evening it's from high to low and they normally occur at the full hour or every qu quarter hour. So now it is over with these signals we can watch our sine wave and you see the sine wave has a little bit of a notch here. I turn down to let's say zero volts. Okay, notch is all gone. That's almost a perfect sign. Wave and now we have that notch. We have an output voltage of three and a half volt. And that little notch is now down here close to the zero line. And if I turn up the, up the output voltage, that notch climbs up. That means that's the switching point of this triac, which goes up to a higher voltage. Now it switches at a higher voltage, giving a higher voltage out to the capacitors. It's now on 40 volt DC. And of course, if I turn it down, um, it will switch at the lower voltage 
to pass only a lower voltage to the capacitors which is now when the output is zero is eight volts so that's the minimum capacitor voltage here in this power supply and you can see something else if I turn up, up quite fast the width of this notch here well I just call it like that oops I messed up my focus okay that's okay so the width of this horizontal line here changes so when I turn back to zero it it's almost gone it's completely gone and then I do nothing now it will come back at a certain moment now so why is that the problem is when I turn up the voltage I turn up the voltage on some large capacitors and these large capacitors need need to be charged so if I go down the charge on the capacitor is higher than what I actually need so it doesn't uh, so it stops switching at all completely and now when the point is reached when the capacitors have discharged which is now it starts to recharge them to 8 volts and if I turn up slowly I only have a small charge so the width of this horizontal line says give me the time uh, how long the triacs are open to charge the capacitors and if I turn that up quite fast it has to charge faster so the horizontal line gets wider so let's try that with a load I give it a medium voltage of 15 volts so the notch here is well not in the center of the sine wave but a little bit higher and now at the moment we are drawing zero amps there is no load connected and what we see here the little horizontal line is the time where the gates of the triax are uh, energized where the triax are actually open to pass current to the transistor uh, to the capacitors and of course the transistors too and now I connect my load and you see this horizontal line here gets much wider because I'm drawing current right now it has to supply more current it's now 8.8 .8 amps so it has to stay on longer and the same of course here on the other side uh, for the negative uh, part of the sine wave okay let's turn it down voltage goes down you see the amount of power has reduced so at the moment I have zero volts and zero amps so that's just idle current here let's go to four volt and two amps that's with load that's without, without load you see it's open for a shorter time with load it's open for a longer time and if I turn up the output voltage it does not only go longer in time it also goes higher in the well it's also a, a question of timing but uh, yeah that's how the uh, primary side of this power supply is regulated or the, the input side or however you want to call it primary is a little bit confusing because we are not talking about the primary of the transformer because the primary of the transformer is of course directly connected to the mains voltage and that does not change
So that means this design here eliminates some of the problems of a linear power supply because on a linear power supply you always have the full voltage on the transistors, in this case 40 volt. Let's say the output voltage is only 5 volt, so the difference is 35 volts, which has to be heated away by these transistors. And given we have an output uh, current of 15 amps, 15 amps times 35 volts, that's 375 watts, which has to be dissipated by, the, by those transistors down here. And of course, by the heat sink here. Uh, for that much power, you certainly need a bigger heat sink, more transistors and probably a fan to get rid of the heat. So they reduce the input voltage to an amount which is only a couple of volts above that voltage you actually want. So you have a primary regulator and then a secondary regulator which does everything a little bit more precisely. Yeah, and so at, for example, 5 volt output you have an input of probably 10 volt, makes a difference of 5 volt. At 15 amps makes 50, 75 watts. And that's probably worst case. Let me see, see. Yes, for example, at 32 volt output, we only have, uh, what did I say? 35 volt input. So it's a difference of three volts. At 15 amps, that's 45 watts. So that's much better than 300 something watts. Okay, I think that was an interesting design and I hope you enjoyed that little excursion into switched and linear power supply technology. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.